Welcome to the Stringer Show. I am Ryan, and I'm about to make a video that has been requested a number of times, and I have been avoiding because it's something I should know about, but I don't use them. And that's the effects loop. is controversial and I have no idea why but I avoid it like the plague and it's not just amps that have effects loop you can't get away from it if you've made the move to Kemper Kemper has an effects loop effects loop Paul Cochran Tim overdrive pedal effects loop okay so if there's an effects loop in amplifiers modeling amplifiers pedals it's probably pretty important what is it that it does? Amplification systems are pretty easy when you break them down to their most basic, very, very basic form, which is that you amplify the input signal and then you amplify the output signal. The input signal is what we call the preamp and there's actually a lot that goes on in the preamp. If we take a look at a dumbbell circuit, look at all of this stuff that's just in the preamp circuit alone. We got a bright switch, we got a mid switch, we got a rock and jazz switch. All of that is just the preamp. So along with the tone shaping capabilities of a preamp also comes a lot of the saturation and compression. So a lot of these big heavy amps from the 80s and 90s that had all kinds of saturation going, it was all coming out of the amplifier, not a pedal. And if you're putting in reverb or delay, you don't want that hitting a wall of compressed saturation unless you do. So the humble effects loop was born and it's right here on amplifiers, most of them, and consists typically of one send and one return. And what you do is you put your effects pedals that you don't want touching the preamp in here. And the result is that your time-based effects will not touch the preamp and will come after to take advantage of the clean power of the power amp. All right, if you don't know where you fall on the effects loop spectrum, let's grab some sound samples and see why you might choose one. Over the other, here is a Henry Amps Pasadena Rose, which is a take on the super lead that Eddie Van Halen played. I use it a lot, I play it all the time, and I have a lot of vintage Marshalls. And then we're going to use a Illuminati Guitars Nebula DX. Remember when we went down to Asheville and visited Illuminati? We'll link to that below. <laughs> Line 6 DL4 MK2, and we'll start out with it going into the front of the amplifier. taking the same DL4, same setting, same guitar, same amplifier. The only thing I did was I kicked up the master volume a little bit because an effects loop will actually pull from your output volume. But other than that, I think you'll hear it sits a lot nicer. <laughs> was hitting the front of the amp to me it felt like i was playing the dl4 like that was the instrument and when you take that out you put it into the effects loop to me now that is a supportive effect but not the main attraction okay so drive pedals are a little bit of a different story when it comes to the effects loop. General rule of thumb is that you want your drive bass pedals to be hitting the inputs of your amplifier and then using the preamp. 
it's not terribly common to see drive pedals in an effects loop, but let's try it out and hear how it sounds. And then on top of that, I'm gonna show you one more thing that you can do, and it's that you can bypass your amp's preamp entirely and use this for it. So we're gonna be using a Frost Giant Electronics Architect of Reality, really, really hefty preamp pedal. And we'll try all three options. <laughs> throw the frost giant architect of reality into the effects loop that's the big no-no i'm not sure it's a big no-no for me though check it out <laughs> So this is really, really fun, and it's something that if you haven't tried before, you're gonna wanna try it like today. Some people run it like this all the time. I didn't know that. I just recently learned about it about six months ago. What we're gonna do here is we are gonna bypass the preamp of the Henry amps completely. And we're gonna plug nothing into the input. Instead, I'm going to plug a guitar into the input of this pedal. And this pedal will go out to the return of the effects loop, bypassing the preamp and it's pretty awesome. <laughs> helps give you an idea of whether or not you want to mess with your effects loop at all. Anecdotally, I think I don't mess with them because about the time that I started getting into music it was when groups like Sonic Youth, Dinosaur Jr., a lot of those bands that really embraced a lot of that noise and compression and reverb before distortion and things like that, they you know, really kind of melded the way I think about guitar, which was less effects loop clean platform type stuff. But both sound incredible and it really just comes down to your taste and how you play. So thanks for spending this time with me. And until next time, I will see you when I see you.